Awesome. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is a really special edition of our kind of fireside chats, our team talks um, that you do with the uh, PSI ASI Snowboard National Team. I'm Brian Donovan uh, with the Snowboard National Team. And uh, tonight, it's just really a one on one conversation with Matt Larson from the Snowboard Team. And really, it's because we have a really special topic coming to you tonight. You know, we've done a, a series on the snowboard tech fundamentals, uh, really the understanding of cause and effect between the, the body and how we make the snowboard do cool things, and then how we balance on the snowboard when the snowboard is doing those cool things. And we've done a series on the snowboard fundamentals about that. So if you haven't checked out that series, I would highly encourage you to hit pause, um, go check out that series of videos or that series of podcasts talking about the fundamentals. So you have a little bit of a baseline understanding and then come back to this session that we're doing right now tonight um, and check out the, the topic. Because what we're talking about tonight is uh, the idea of how the snowboard tech fundamentals um, can be adapted and, and kind of harnessed uh, when you're on specific gear. And that specific gear is, you know, Alpine or hard boots and, and, and plate setups and, and Alpine snowboards that are specific with different shapes and different flexes and different things like that. And our resident expert to kind of chat through this tonight is a huge huge fan and and i would say probably the biggest promoter that i've ever seen for riding in hard boots and riding <laughs> alpine boards and and so i just really want to say uh welcome to matt larson i want to say thank you for him being here tonight and kind of putting him on the spot really just doing a one-on-one -on -one talk but again he's the resident expert and so i wanted to kind of get his take on it so matt what do you got to say to kind of introduce yourself and then we can kind of kick things off yeah i'm i'm pumped to be talking with you about this brian uh he hit it right on. Like, I, I love being on these, uh, you, you've heard probably different words for it, either like Alpine snowboarding or hard boot snowboarding. Those are all ways to describe this. And it's something that, that I've just, uh, every time I get on it, biggest grin, huge grin when I'm on the equipment. And, uh, so I've, I've really wanted to carry that forward and share that with as many people as I can. Cause, uh, it's, it's just a good time, but, but also it comes with like, those question marks of like, well, what is it? And how do I get started? And am I going to like it? And uh, how do I do it? Where do I go to get information? And so uh, hopefully I can offer some of that stuff to everyone watching tonight. Yeah, very, very cool. And that's, that's really the goal is, is just to use this as an informational session. Um, I know that when Matt started talking to me about riding in hard boots, um, I had preconceived ideas of what it was. Um, and then a little bit of spoiler alert, uh, he hosted a session at the uh, National Academy and Rider Rally last spring, and it was probably the most talked about session of the whole week um, with how successful it was, how many people like went in thinking that they were going to be absolutely terrible at it, not be able to stand up or turn. And then like all the way to see it through, I just actually, uh, as we were kind of connecting tonight, I told Matt that a, a good friend is buying an Alpine setup for this season. And so just to see like somebody who went in like, super low expectations and that kid is buying a setup this winter um that's really the excitement we want to kind of just give some information to so you know matt you hit it um for people that might be watching tonight or listening in on the podcast what is like an alpine snowboard setup like give us the and i know that there's some specialties within that but but just kind of define it so that people that maybe don't have an idea or don't have a picture in their head can kind of wrap their head around what it is yeah uh so uh typically the snowboards uh, are a little bit longer and uh, and you'll have a binding actually. Okay. See, I, I prepped. Look at this. I got examples right here. So this, this would be a binding for uh, an Alpine snowboard set up with this loop. And sometimes you'll see one of these on the front and, and the back of the binding. And it's got that little uh, toe and heel piece, just like you'd see on a ski boot that fit into those. And, uh, and you have this, this, hard boot that allows you to really drive a lot of energy into your snowboard. And typically you'll see, you'll see snowboards and they'll have a lot more of that uh, traditional camber profile. Uh, sometimes it's, it's quite extreme. Uh, I have a snowboard. It's got uh, 14 millimeters of, of rise at the middle of the board. Uh, so like a gap, you can like almost like stuck, stick your hand in underneath it when it's sitting flat on a table. Uh, which just really allows that um, distribution of pressure uh, along the length of the edge to um, to be managed and to to really 
to bend and, and manipulate that snowboard and, and play with that. It's, it's quite a trip. And, uh, and then, and then on top of that, the way that you mount your bindings is different. And so you'll see people with, um, uh, f- facing forward down the hill almost. So they're, so instead of like a sideways stance, it's more like this. And, and the degrees on my stance are actually, uh, 60 and 68 degrees. That's what I ride. It's, um, it's very forward. And some of that is just about re- eliminating that heel and toe drag. So you can, um, not have any limits uh, as far as like booting out and laying it over, maxing out some tilt. And we're going to get into the fundamentals here in a little bit, but um, that's something that you'll notice. And then there's, there's things that you can do as far as changing the pitch of the binding underneath your boot. So is your toe higher up than your heel or vice versa, uh, or even what's going on left to right under your foot, uh, which is called canting. And so all of those things, um, make make changes to your equipment help you customize that and and allow you to get a lot of performance out of your out of your snowboard cool i i think matt like one of the things to me is that like uh, one of the cool pieces or nuggets is that this is the history of where snowboarding where we come from right like this is at the uh the earliest kind of evolutions of gear it was like people figuring out how do we take pre-existing ski gear and make it into a cooler version to get down the hill. And so a lot of like people that might be listening in tonight might have experience where this is what they saw, or this is what they experienced, or this is what they taught on. And then all of a sudden you kind of fast forward through snowboard evolution and you get a little bit of skateboard influence and a little bit of surfing influence and, and, and freestyle influence. And we started to explore what board shapes could be and what bindings and boots could be made out of and have the flex and the different things and just really the performance applications. Um, but what I love about it is um, I love all of the movements that you can take from that history. So like, let's get into it. Like let's talk snowboard fundamentals because I know in my own riding, even though I ride a traditional, like my daily driver is a twin snowboard with soft boots and a duck stance. I still know that I use moves with my hips and my uh, the bones in my legs and my core that have roots in alpine snowboarding. Like I absolutely know it. I teach clinics on this of like the history of snowboarding, how you take like these cool things that we used to do with the gear and apply it to different gear setups. And so like, let's just talk when you take people out who come from maybe a soft snowboard boot setup and they're going out alpine snowboarding with you, what are like the, the things that are the first things where you're like, Hey, this is going to be different and I'm going to kind of address it. And how does it maybe talk to some of the snowboard tech fundamentals? Yeah. And I just got to throw some props out there to our, uh, I'm going to use the word elders, but our snowboarders that are out there that, that really um, brought this to life years and years ago. And, and even in our first snowboard uh, teaching manual, like the first national team, we had team members that that's, this is the gear they wrote. And those are the picks that are in the manual. It's pretty incredible. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, mechanics, right? It's, uh, it's kind of a cool cross. I mean, we call it alpine snowboarding. And, and if you think about the biomechanics and how we move our bodies on skis versus being on a snowboard, there's a blend there. And, uh, and yeah, so we, we use these same joints. We have our hips, we have our knees, we have our ankles. Uh, we, we move in our spine a little bit too. And we use those things to, to manipulate our snowboards in, in different ways, which is our snowboard tech fundamentals. And, uh, and I, I, you know, when, when let's take that scenario, Brian, where, okay, all right. So we got, we got some friends, they want to go out and they want to try this stuff a little bit where, what are, what are we going to do? What are we going to focus on? And, um, some things that we're going to look at is, uh, starting with some familiar, things from our snowboard we're just going to start with someone that uh, maybe it has that duck stance on that twin snowboard and they're gonna we're gonna go into this alpine snowboard thing and uh so yeah there's going to be some things that are, are different and and a lot of that's related to that stance and yet we want some of those same performances so like a a great thing to do is just to practice right how do we move our center of mass across the snowboard to create some tilt underneath our feet so we can get that edge to grab the snow. That's, 
that's key, right? We want our snowboards to slip sometimes and we want them to grab other times. And, uh, and that doesn't change here. Uh, what changes is, is how we get that to do that. So, so we end up with more movement laterally in our, uh, in our joints that allow us to move that way, like our hips, where we got that ball and socket joint, we can move left to right. And, uh, and that, that's a, an awesome place to start. And then I'll just jump into another one. Another one is just moving along the length of the board. And so you end up more with movements that are, are independent. Say you're doing one thing with your right leg. That's going to look a little bit different with your left leg as you move along the length of the snowboard, uh, which really actually um, there's a benefit because our knees like to move in a direction that, that uh, works better on that along the length or fore and aft uh, movement along the snowboarders, which is really cool. So we'll play with those, those two ranges of motion to just manipulate the board on some really flat terrain and practice with uh, getting some slip and getting some grab out of our snowboards. That's super cool. One of the things that you just spoke to that um, stood out to me when I first, like the first time I was on snow with you, watching you rip around in your outline setup was the fact that with your positive angles, your bindings, you're, ankles actually helped you get four aft. Whereas like for the most part, when I'm riding like a twin duck setup, I don't use my ankles that much in the same way to move four aft, right? Like I'm moving my center of mass or I'm sliding the bar underneath me, but it's really happening with uh, shortening one leg and lengthening the other leg or vice versa or something like that. But when you guys are posi posi and, and here's my hands, right? And when you're posi posi, your ankles now allow you to get forward and like accelerate back and move the board underneath you. And, um, and it, it is very much like Alpine, uh, people on just Alpine skis or even like tele skis, um, you're able to use a whole extra joint and, and the ankles are pretty powerful joint and, and watching you rip around really like compressing into it. I could see performance happening. And that was pretty cool to like take a joint again. It's a pretty powerful joint and then just add it into uh, a movement and a, and an outcome that you already do pretty successfully on other setups. So um, that was pretty cool. I have a question though, and, and I'm going to be fully upfront. Uh, I have not uh, been in a hard boot setup with Matt Larson. I haven't been able to pick his brain yet. Um, but like how much can you actually bend your ankle in the boots that you ride when you're on your Alpine setup? Is it super stiff? Is there some play like what talk to me? Like you're trying to sell me on, the fact that I'm not going to lock myself into this like super rigid cast on my ankle. <laughs> uh, there there's definitely more flex and, uh, and I, something like a term that uh, many of you will relate to is forward lean. And that's built into those hard boots, the, the, um, Alpine snowboard boots that we wear. So the, uh, uh, it's made to flex. It's got a softer tongue. And then there's a lot of movements and some boots actually have like a spring system that runs up the back of your leg, like, like underneath your calf, uh, to help hold a little bit of tension and give you a little bit more structure. Uh, so you can one, yes, really flex that ankle and drive your knees towards the nose of your board. Uh, but also come out of that because getting, getting stuck up there would be scary. I, there's a, teaser there's a little clip out there of me going over the handlebars on my snowboard see if you can find it <laughs> but but just totally blew up which which can happen and it's just like this little timing thing where i was just driving really hard through it and then the pressure's built up and i just uh i really just didn't want to give it up so i went over the handlebars <laughs> There, there's a chance that I may dig up that footage and for those that are watching this on youtube that might be injected right about here uh for those listening <laughs> in on the podcast you'll have to tune in the youtube version but yes i will absolutely search for that cool so keep talking tell me um like when i watch you ride an alpine setup one of the things that blows me away is the like i i call it precision i call it like the like slicing the the tightness that you're able to make turns how far you're able to get your body over towards the snow and then actually get right back up and and it's a lot of really cool outcomes or a lot of really cool performances that like that to me looks like the uh the cool drug right like that looks like the cool thing that just puts that smile on your face that looks like the thing where it's like you're getting a sensation or you're getting an experience that that gear promotes and that gear gives you that you can't necessarily achieve on all your gear. And so like, 
talk to me about that because when I watch you lay it over and do these like crazy tight turns and like hook it up and almost like slingshot out, like I can relate because I have similar sensations on my normal snowboard, but not to the like the super high edge angle, not to the super high tight radius and, and tight arc, you know? So like, talk me through that. Like, is that I, as cool I, as it looks? Yeah. I just, I love that. It's, um, it's so visible to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause for me, I, it's like, it, it still blows my mind to go out and ride this gear. Um, so just to throw some numbers for the nerds out there, uh, the, the, uh, side cut radius on a alpine board might be like 18 meters and then when you go and lay some of these tight carves in um i don't know like five eight meter radius turn in a hard carve laying over the snow um yeah it's it's like i don't know i'm getting all giggly just thinking about it right now well so i can yeah. paint a picture for people is that I was out with you at Rider Rally last spring and I was like getting a bunch of video of all these people who had never been on Alpine setups, just like giddy with having a blast, like ripping around. And as a person grabbing video, there were multiple times that I got buzzed because I was not expecting people to be able to hook it up and turn as aggressively as they could. And it turned into some pretty cool video, but it's like me letting somebody go about three inches below me as they're just like, you know, Maverick buzzing the tower. Yeah. And it was like not even able to anticipate how tight some of the arcs you guys were able to achieve. It was, it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like to talk about, you know, again, for people that are into tech, you know, your average board that you're probably riding is probably somewhere between seven and nine meters of side cut. And so to see somebody that has more than double that or double that, and then can shrink it, that footprint, that is, it's pretty cool. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. I get a lot of excitement out that. And, uh, uh, it, it really, it really comes from, um, having a tool that opens some doors to how you can explore movement over a snowboard. Uh, the, the, the range or availability of movement that's there to, um, as you described, like, like moving laterally over the snowboard to like laying your body right over the snow and then come out of that and go right into the other side and uh, feel the forces underneath your feet as you, as you decamber that snowboard to get it to bend and, and make a turn. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a fun experience. And, and there's a lot that you can do as far as uh, putting input into your gear. And there's also a reciprocal relationship there where it tells you a lot too. And so there's this back and forth that goes on where you're, you're managing say uh, four and a half pressure because you want that nose of the board to just fold a little bit more for you to hook it in a little bit tighter, or you're coming past the fall line and you know, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to need to get out of this turn now that I'm laying down over the snow. So that's what you're going to do is you're going to get some more pressure, just a little bit more up on the nose. So that'll push back up on you and you can get yourself, uh, your center of mass and bring it close to your board over the top and then drive into the next one. And so these, these like little tweaks that you get to make to, um, really make your turns your own, you know, it doesn't have to be this super tight turn either. Sometimes it could just be this, uh, like really cruisy large radius turn where you're, your cut through the snow just feels so clean and crisp that it puts a smile on your face. So to, to that, like, you know, you're talking um, like a bigger turn, not this super tight arc. Right. And one of the big applications that I'd love to hear you speak to is, is people race on Alpine boards and they almost keep it in the fall line. And it's, they're so quick edge to edge, you know, it's um, whether they're doing slalom or GS or, or, or if you really look, like if you're looking at a lot of top end border cross racers, um, there's a ton of people that are on Alpine setups that are really just trying to maximize what they can get in and out of their turns and, and the performance. And I can say I race, um, I race uh, an annual bank slalom uh, series every year. And there's more and more people showing up to the bank slalom on Alpine setups, you know, posy posy, and just in the start gate, dropping in and slaying some really fast times. Uh, some of the athletes that threw down the top times this past spring in the, in the Vermont open bank slalom 
we're definitely on Alpine setups. And so um, talk to that niche a little bit, you know, like we might have coaches listening in who have athletes that um, this could be a, a, a breakthrough to put them on different gear, like an Alpine setup to really, you know, focus in on racing or, or border cross, or, or like I said, even just a bank Solemn series. Um, so kind of talk to that application. Cause um, there's some, there's some, people who want to be on alpine setups who don't want to do tight arcs because tight arcs slow them down they want to go yeah. fast so yeah. talk to that yeah um there's uh there's i mean every the courses are different right like it sometimes it's a it's a tighter course you got gates sometimes it's open it up and hold on and um and in that kind of scenario you have a piece of gear that's gonna cut through uh chop like like something that would cut through chop really well <laughs> analogy, I don't know, knife through butter, right? Let's be cliche. Cause why not? Uh, but like I, for instance, I took, um, my gear up on like a chalky kind of powder day, uh, for anyone who's been up, been up to big sky, that's my home mountain. And I'm riding like the upper mountain up in the powder seeker lift up in the bowl. It's all like black terrain. And it's, it's kind of like soft mogly day. And I'm in my hard boots and I could open it up and cut arcs through these moguls like they weren't even there and uh to have to have a tool at your disposal say on a race course where you're gonna where stuff's gonna get skied out you're gonna have ruts you you're gonna have slick spots and you have a piece of gear that's gonna uh, manage and um, give you some opportunity on how you can drive your snowboard through that stuff is is a, is a pretty cool deal and definitely can be a game changer for people and, uh, and I should mention, we, we think about Alpine snowboarding as carving, right? We think about like laying arcs, laying trenches, like, yeah, I went out and I put some trenches in. You could see like, there were shadows cast down into the bottom of my arcs, you know, like bragging about it all day. And, uh, and, and it doesn't mean that you're only carving. There's, there's a lot of big pivot moves that can come into play or, or creating rotation in your body to pivot your snowboard a little bit here or there, because sometimes you're going to need to do that. And then you, then you hook up your board, lay that edge in with confidence and, and redirect your, your center of mass and your momentum back down the fall line again. And so uh, there's some, some pretty high performance moves that you can do to um, also use a, a pivot where your, your board actually pivots a little bit and then hooks up and takes off. And, um, and th so those are, those are the, the tools or tactics that you might use if you're in a, a tighter turn kind of race course scenario. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's options out there. It's, it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, you, so two things you said, like knock me out of the park, just in, in concept of, I, I would say that, I've definitely been of that mindset that I, I, when I think Alpine race board or, or Alpine snowboard, I think perfect groomers and, and going out before anybody else is on the mountain and just like, like you said, lay in trenches. And, and so to really uh, not put it only in that, um, you know, narrow window of focus is, is pretty cool to like, think about the idea of absolutely being able to blow through chop and to kind of cut through and slice through that type of stuff. I can say that that, that kind of opens up what I think, or what I maybe thought was, was the, the ideal day on an Alpine setup. And then the yeah. other, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I'm just thinking like of like Eric Shackleton stories about like switch bumps for his level three exam on Alpine snowboard. Like what? Like, and I, I'm, that is not something that I go and do. And there, I have, I have a lot of learning and a lot of things that I'm still after myself on this gear, but yeah. Yeah. Crazy. How many different places you can take that. There's even, even people that love to go ride just the deep, fresh stuff, the powder in on, on this equipment. Well, and then I have two other things that come to mind is like, you know, I, I, I'm a student of different disciplines and, and I love talking to Alpine race coaches and, and watching videos of people like Ted Ligeti. And they always talk about that, like high end skiv it move where it's like, the skiv it. Yes. Right. Like in, in Alpine racing, they, very seldom want to pivot their skis because that typically means a little bit of friction. That typically means going slower, but top um, athletes are like in a GS course, do a little bit of pivot, set an edge and go and a little bit of pivot, set an edge and go so that they can uh, modify the, the shape of the, the turn they're trying to get. 
And when you are talking about it's not all about carbon on your alpine board, that's what comes to mind is you want to manipulate the board so that you can get it to like the exact point you want. And then you want to get the performance out of it maybe. And so it's not all just slicing, but it's a little bit of like that, like slip and grip that you're talking about and then picking and choosing. So well, tell me about it when you're um, posi posi alpine setup, and you don't want to just be like quick edge to edge laying arcs. Like, is there a difference in how you like lighten up and how you get it to kind of pivot or skiv it underneath you? Like, talk to me. What is that? Yeah. How about like that up on weighted versus like down on weighted turn that you, that we look for that, is, you know, as far as like the spectrum of how to move your center of mass as you change edges, like those are the, those are the two ends and you can work with anything in the middle there. And, uh, and this is one that definitely favors more of that up on weighted, right? So you come out of the turn, your board, uh, your equipment uh, is all, all decambered or, or flexed like this. And you come out of that, there's a lot of energy there stored up and it's going to want to push you up and, and you take advantage of that. And so timing a little bit of a movement of, of turning in your spine, maybe turning your pelvis a little bit as you're getting that unweighted movement will give you a little bit of pivot in your snowboard. And then you skid and, and then hook up and go. That's super cool. I'm, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to let you coach me for a second. So in my own snowboarding and I'm, again, I'm talking like my normal everyday board. So soft boots, uh, buy into soft bindings, uh, duck set up, you know, let's just paint a real picture. You know, I'm on like a 152 park board <laughs> And I'm on something steep and gnarly. And, uh, and I've in my own riding, like every once in a while, like I'll open up my hips, I'll open up my shoulders. And with my soft setup, it makes me super aware of like reference alignments, making me super aware of like, if I get too open, I kind of lose range of motion. Um, and I'm really aware of it in my own riding to make sure I can still get performance in a twin board. But like, talk to me about that kind of mentality. Cause when I think of those moves, it immediately drives the image of, alpine uh, snowboarding because i think about turning my femur i think about uh, is my spine turned inside my body a little bit and is my core tight am i like turned just enough that my rear leg is going to be really long and extended and so i think about alpine snowboard moves even though i'm on just a steep gnarly you know like groomed run on a twin park board and so like talk to me about those little nuances of like moves that you're really aware of and how you apply them to your snowboarding when you're not on an alpine setup and, and how you then like take those and maybe harness them when you are on an alpine setup. Yeah. You know, um, so, okay. All right. We're coaching now. All right. Studente. Uh, a lot of things are, or how about one common thing that people will um, need to make an adjustment about or, or adapt as you move from say like soft boot setups and get into that hard boot thing uh, this, this Alpine snowboarding is, uh, a lot of like, well, what's going on leg to leg. And the coaching piece that I usually share is hide your rear knee behind your front knee. As you go into, uh, your heel edge turn. And, um, and that's, if, if you think uh, you got to imagine here, right? So just like, like close your eyes for a moment, visualize standing on just standing, we do a lot of carpet boarding. We call it, you know, just like standing in your living room, right? And you're standing on your board. You got one foot in front of the other and you're about to turn onto your heel edge. And so you're going to take that, that rear knee and you're just going to tuck it in behind that front knee. And, and what that's going to allow you to do is to keep the board uh, either completely flat or maybe even increase the tilt on the tail of your board to a higher degree than the nose of your board. Oh yeah, that, there's where it is. You're like, whoa, right? So <laughs> um, yep. that that is a big move right there. And it's a lot to commit to, um, but it's the thing that's gonna help you get that board to grab and start cutting through the snow as soon as you want that to happen, is to pull that knee across. And it's something that we don't really think about. Uh, it isn't really how we move our bodies when we're on our soft boot setups. 
Well, so that's, I'm going to take that challenge. I'm going to run. So for anybody that's listening to the podcast version, that's not watching the live video. I have been sitting here with my eyes closed and I was visualizing Matt coaching me to carpet board. And then I visualized that knee move. And I immediately, when he said the back of the board, maybe twists and engages and ramps up the edge angle. I like open my eyes because that makes sense to me. And, and so here's what I'd say is that, um, one of the things about riding a soft boot setup is these moves can still have performance, right? And I think too many times we get stuck in our rut of like, this is how I engage my snowboard to get on my downhill edge, to turn, to get around that bump or through the trees or whatever it ends up being. Um, but as we get better and more experienced, like these are the moves, I'm going to take that and I'm going to see if I can get that uh, rear knee to tuck in under my body a little bit, even on my soft boot setup and see what it does and, and just see if it has a, a, a performance outcome or a performance like effect that I can get and harness. And then maybe if I can do it and replicate it five or six times, you know, scientific theory, um, then I can put that in my pocket and then pull that move out if and when I need to get that performance. And so I, I'm going to challenge myself to do that. And I would challenge anybody listening. That's the beauty of snowboarding or, or teaching snowboarding is um, take some of these concepts and, and go out and play with them and apply them. And don't just do it once, do it 10 times, a hundred times, thousand times and see what it does for you and then come back and, and, and challenge, like drop a comment in this video a year from now and be like, I did this and it hooked up so hard that I ended up like three trails over on my belly or I did this and it gave me this sensation. And, and that's really high level, you know, thinking about snowboarding and, and high level coaching and instructing. And, and I love that, that challenges. Don't ever tell me I can't do it or I shouldn't do it because I'm going to then go out and do it. Yeah, go do it. I'm I, I'm just hoping that someone's gonna be following you with a camera when you go play with that. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna plug this too. There's a trick tip Tuesday that actually incorporates a movement like this. So if you want to see some visuals of of that happening, of getting a little more tilt on near the tail of your board, uh, go check that out. Cool, and uh, I'll elaborate on that for anybody that's not hip to what uh, Matt's talking about. Um, the snowboard national team has an initiative with social media. It's, it's really driven off of Instagram and it comes through uh, team members channels and, and personal pages. It comes through the national, the snow pros site. Um, but trick tip Tuesday is an initiative for the, from the snowboard team. And it, it has everything from doing your first butter or your first turn all the way up through throwing out a crazy, like how to ramp up edge angle or, or twist the board to get a little bit more performance into it. So um, jump on social media uh, check out the snow pros page to find all these and then you know go and follow some of the team members who are putting these content out because it's it's really cool little little quick snippets that are going to like highlight something that you can immediately go out that day and put into your riding whether it's something you already own and you're just adding a different flavor to it or it's something that you're struggling to do and you want to do and, and maybe it's your gateway into it so trick tip tuesday is the hashtag um, the snow pros, uh, Instagram handle is really the best place to find it and kind of like zero in your bullseye. And then from there you can, you can jump out and follow them. So, um, definitely check that out. And, and, and like I said, Matt's not going to toot his own horn. So I'm going to toot it for him. So, um, pivoting a little bit, uh, and, and pun intended, um, somebody that has never been on an Alpine setup and has no access. What is step one? Like, I want to try this and I don't have. Uh, a friend who has three extra setups just hanging out in his truck. Um, how do how does somebody get into just dabbling in riding an alpine setup without just going full hog and buying a, buying a complete package without kind of ever you know test driving first? You, you know, I, I would encourage you to just take the setup you have and change the stance. Uh, you can you can take your bindings. Um, the EST set that's the most difficult. You're going to hit some max there because they're just not. Uh, if you're using the the channel EST binding, but if you have the plate connection, then you can like turn it a little bit further. But but go play with some stances. Maybe start at like like maybe 50 degrees or maybe not get too nuts. But um, but you know get on some green terrain. Remember bring that down a little bit and and go find a place where you can uh, do some traverses safely across the hill. Be looking up. Um, I need to just throw a safety piece out here. Brian's alluded to it a little bit, but like when, when there's an Alpine snowboarder out there, moves will happen that the general public is not prepared for and, and, and collisions can happen. And so be on the defense if, when you're going to go out and play with this, because 
one, you'll have a lot of fun, but also people aren't really going to expect what's going about to happen. Uh, so start with that. And then, um, you know, if it, you're, you'll, that'll open up the door of like really being able to max out tilt will just be so much fun. Like even if you're just doing a straight run and then you just lay it over until you slowly lay down on the hill and then you just come to a stop. Like it'll, it'll, you'll have that chance to play with some performance that really hasn't been available to you uh, until you change your stance like that. And then, then uh, if that's your fancy, or if you just really want to dive in, there's a lot of cool forums in a, in an, an Alpine snowboard community that's out there and you, and they're, they're so pumped to connect with more people out there. And, and so if, if you get out on some social media platforms, uh, uh, like on Facebook, if you just like search Alpine snowboarding, you'll see people that want to sell gear, they're trading gear. Um, there's people that are, uh, happy to answer questions about performance and how to do this or that. And likely you'll be able to get some stuff in the mail at a pretty good price and, and go out and play on that gear. So I would say that, oh, okay, wait, one other plug, because let's say you see that one like lone wolf out riding around. We've all seen him, right? There's that one, one person that's just out there. She or he is just out there making those arcs, like go say hi, because they'll, they'll probably have a bunch of gear and they'll probably want a friend. <laughs> so Spoken so like another... someone that maybe, <laughs> maybe is that person. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's another cool way to do it. And then, um, and there's, I mean, they, this, this gear is still produced. So um, you'll see a lot of like old stuff circulating around, but if you want to get into this, it's out there. So uh, yeah, do some digging or shoot me, shoot me a, a, a line. I'll be happy to answer some questions or direct you somewhere where you can get answers or, or gear. So I'd be happy to do that. I'll make sure to drop um, all of your social handles into the descriptions for this video and for the podcast so that uh, people can find you. Um, But go ahead, just shout out your Instagram uh, so that people can kind of like get a preemptive start on that. Yeah. Uh, It's at slippery slopes. And actually I, I dropped it right here. Hopefully you guys can pick that up. Do you see that? Yeah, you see that, Brian. Uh, there are, there's three underscores between slippery and slopes, but that's where you'll find me on, on the gram and, uh, and maybe on the TikTok, tock breaching some new territory there, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so go check that out. Um, you'll find a lot of cool stuff. I got two last things to share. So, um, and this is a story that not many people I've ever shared this with. So this could be a, uh, uh, unveiling this story. And this is a long time ago. I was teaching full time. And we, um, we got bored one day and we went in the rental shop and we had just gotten in a whole fleet of new Burton LTR uh, boards and bindings and boots and setups and everything. And, and at the time it was the, the base plate discs that were super easy to like flip the handle, put a binding on, lock it down, change the stance angle. And so of course I was like, well, I'm going to put those on my, my, my board. And then that way I can just change my binding angles to whatever I want. And I'm going to go ride posi posi. I'm going to ride like all sorts of like crazy stance angles. And uh, I didn't really like have the engineer brain where I thought that, man, these LTR discs have metal teeth on them and my bindings have plastic teeth on them. And, uh, <laughs> and it took me all of about like three, like really high energy turns to just shred all the teeth off of my bindings so that then my bindings were just freely pivoting around on top of my board and the remainder of the run to just survive to get to the bottom where like any little nuanced move I made, I just like free pivoted as though I was about to like moonwalk into just random stance angles. Um, it was a, a very expensive lesson and a very scary lesson that I learned. So uh, Matt's alluding to it, change up your setups, but don't make some crazy Frankenstein setup that might um, not be just what I'd say is slow down, think it through, say like, oh, I'm just going to turn my own base plates and make this a sense, but don't try to create something that maybe isn't supposed to be used for that purpose. And that's, that's my PSA for my own experience. Um, awesome. last thing, Matt, I know that you hammer this, um, really cool event. I would almost call it like a festival and you haven't mentioned it yet tonight, but, um, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm, I might butcher it, but it's called the Montucky clear cut. Is that, the, it. that's okay. So, that's um, it. just give me, cause this is one of those things where, uh, I, at, at least from an outsider looking in, Matt is always highly recruiting people to attend this event. He talks about the fact that it is really just one of those events where 
uh, that idea of community comes together, spend some days on snow together with a really high focus. You meet a ton of people with uh, a similar interest or similar passion and all ranges of ability level. And so Matt, that's my, like what I've absorbed from you talking about it, but give us a little bit more. Cause I know it's something that you're really passionate about really promoting and getting people to kind of check out. So, so what is it? Yeah. Montucky Clearcut, and you'll find it. Uh, just do a search Montucky Clearcut. I'm, uh, there's a website uh, that's happening February 6th through the 9th this winter. Uh, it happens once a year, every year. It's uh, it's actually a fundraiser. It's a, this is a, this happens at a small ski area in Northwest Montana and it's a fundraiser for the mountain and the ski patrol to keep operations open at this really cool little, little place. Uh, but it's also designed to be an event where only Alpine snowboarders will be there. And therefore we can eliminate the, uh, the collision hazard, um, uh, component, right? It's like the mountain is open just for the participants of the event. They cap the number and, uh, and you go and you cruise this mountain. And, and like Brian said, you have the, a range of ability levels. You'll have, uh, some people who are, um, just, just flirting with getting those edge edges to hook up and, and carve for them on the hill. And so they're doing a lot of just more skidded type turns and then others that are there to just dig trenches all day long. And, uh, it's, it's a really cool community They'll, It'll be a gathering of people from all over the country. And, uh, sometimes there's some international presence there. Some people come down from Canada or, or shoot, maybe even from across the pond somewhere, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great place to connect and, um, and demo gear. So that's a cool opportunity there. So like, Donic and Winter Stick and uh, and other companies will will be there to uh, share their gear and you can try some stuff out and um, um, and, oh Rad Air Rad Air's there <laughs> they had, how about a two hundred and one centimeter snowboard yeah <laughs> anyway so you get to go play with some stuff and um, they do giveaways and raffles and they go out to dinner and um, it's a four day event and it's a blast so. Definitely go check it out if, if you want to um, go do something different this winter and, and get involved in that community. Cool. So I'm going to give you a minute to think about this one. So I'm just going to, uh, I'll prompt you with what is the last like parting message? You know, what's the, anything that we didn't chat about? What is like uh, one thing you want people to know about Alpine snowboarding? You know, think about this and I'm going to kind of continue to plug it while you do. Um, I, I said it at the beginning of tonight's session. Um Matt ran a really cool couple of sessions at last year's National Academy and Rider Rally at Big Sky, um, where he took people who had no exposure to alpine snowboarding and put them in setups. Um, he had some uh, people there with a bunch of different demo boards and a whole range of boot sizes and, and was able to get people on snow. It was, it was probably the most talked about session of the whole week uh, at National Academy and Rider Rally of just people who went in and were blown away by how much fun they had and the smiles on their face and how actually how it was easier than they had originally thought it was going to be. And, and I would just say it was a blast. I can only imagine that it's going to become an annual thing at National Academy and Rider Rally because of how exciting and how how just well it was received last year and so i'm going to plug that with if you haven't looked at attending national academy or rider rally uh definitely look at doing that it is on uh, the snowpros.org site you can sign up already um, it's at big sky uh montana again this coming spring and it's next april um, big sky is matt's home mountain so if you're not able to go to rider rally or national academy and you just want to go out and, and book matt for a lesson on hard boots you know by all means go check out a super rad mountain in montana at big sky and, and do that and so i think i bought you enough time what's your your parting <laughs> messages what did we uh not cover what's the the last elevator pitch that you want to give for how we can you know adapt the snowboard tech fundamentals to be uh used on a whole different kind of gear setup yeah and i just want to plug uh just throw uh, a thank you to donic because they they gave us that gear for uh rider rally and academy last spring and that was awesome and um that was very generous of them to loan us some gear like that and and hopefully we can do some more of that and uh and yeah well, I had an answer like immediately, right. When you said that, and, uh, and I'm grinning about it. It's just like the, the, um, 
what you get to experience on the snowboard is just it's it's so different and yet so so fun and exhilarating because of the um the 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 it almost feels limitless as far as how much you can push pressure underneath your feet or or bend a board and manipulate a board in a way that you've never done it before and and having a chance to do that is just so cool and also like it's it gives you experiences to really think about what you do on your other snowboard in different ways and and so so take whatever information you might get out of that and and bring it back into your riding and you'll find ways to to change things up and um and put a smile on your face cool matt um i think you sold me i think my takeaway right there is no matter what gear i'm on clue into what i'm doing the performance i get and then always be like thinking about what is possible what the limits are what the experiences could be the sensations could be so um i i just want to say a huge thank you uh this is probably the the most unique you know fireside chat tech zoom call conversation we've had so far where it's just a one-on-one -on -one where i literally put matt on the spot and said i have an idea would you be down and without even hesitating he said yes and and i think it's just a really cool way for us to take a talent of a, a, a current team member and really just explore uh, something that they have. That's a really niche extra uh, like level of knowledge and experience and, and share it out there and create uh, a community within our community. And so I just want to say again, you know, Matt Larson from the ASI snowboard national team. Thank you for kind of putting yourself out there tonight, chatting through Alpine snowboarding, all the nuances, putting up with my virtual coaching and my all my weird questions. Um, so just a huge thank you from me. Again, I'm Brian Donovan with the ASI Snowboard National Team. Uh, have a great night. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Keep checking out these series. If you haven't seen our six series on the Snowboard Tech Fundamentals and you didn't listen to our suggestion to pause, go check those out and come back. <laughs> Go do that now. The links will be at the end of this video. For those listening on the podcast, you can find the links on YouTube um, or on the uh, in the description of the podcast episodes you're listening to. So, Matt, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, thank you all. Hopefully, we'll go lay some trenches someday. You take care out there. Or skiv it. <laughs> or skiv it. <laughs>